Hey there and welcome back to Autumn Afar. Thank you so much for joining me today and welcome back to those of you who have joined me before. As always, I encourage you to do your own research and form your own opinions, especially since today's video is mostly opinion based. Today I'm going to be talking about things I no longer pack. So there are a lot of things that I have learned to live without when I travel and when I go different places. These are just a few of the things that I used to always pack but have stopped using almost completely because I do not need them when I travel anymore. The first of which is liquid soaps. Shampoos, conditioners, and body washers all generally come in liquid form. However, Lush has started me on the path of using either um, solid or tablet based products for shampoos and conditioners as well as body washes. It also means that I'm able to travel with just a carry-on and not have to worry about going over my limit of liquids and that nothing will spill in the bag. They are a little bit more expensive to buy them but I do find that they work fairly well. While they may not be fantastic, many hotels and hostels uh, often have soap dispensers in showers or give small little complimentary shampoo and conditioners as well as uh, body washes and soaps and things of that nature. So you can always rely on those if you're going to be going to a hotel. When traveling or camping in areas that are sensitive to the products being used, I tend to go for a company like Lush or another natural based company so that I know that the products that I'm using are natural based and are not going to harm the environment. Another thing that I tend not to bring with me anymore is dry shampoo. I have been very self-conscious about my hair looking greasy or dirty so I would take dry shampoo with me and even you know in between showers I would dry shampoo my hair because I was uncomfortable with how I looked. So I would always try to make sure that my hair looked like I was fresh out of the shower. So I realized as I was traveling that I shower a lot more than I expected. I also end up swimming a lot more and I end up wearing hats basically every day in warmer climates. So I don't necessarily need to make sure my hair looks that good. It's also not necessarily good for your scalp if you're doing it over and over and over again. Uh, which I used to do and it ends up taking up uh, well, quite a bit of space in my bag and I'm always very concerned that the canister is going to pop or explode because I'm, I worry a lot and the last time I brought it with me I took a three month trip and it got used once and it wasn't even used by me so I do not bring dry shampoo with me anymore when I travel. Another thing that used to be something I would bring with me constantly is bug spray. For some reason mosquitoes seem to love me so I very often end up covered in mosquito bites and deer fly bites so I would always bring bug spray with me but I don't anymore and as you sit there and start to scratch yourself as I talk about mosquito bites uh, the reason is because most of the time local guides, friends, um, or other travelers are usually willing to share with you and if not you can always pick up a small bottle when you're there and pass it on to someone else. Um, another reason is that most bug sprays will work regionally so the bug spray that I use here won't necessarily work somewhere else. So the, the bug spray that is sold here in Canada for mosquitoes and deer flies will probably not work in Australia with those goddamn sand mites and you also need to be careful with swimming like products like that on because you don't want to cause any unnecessary damage which uh, another item would be sunscreen. I no longer travel with sunscreen which sounds very counterintuitive however when I get somewhere I usually pick up a bottle of sunscreen that is to the um, the local standard. A lot of places now no longer sell sunscreen that has certain chemicals in it because it is damaging to coral reefs and to the ocean and to the little fishies. So I always pick up any sunscreen at destination just to be safe. Something else that I no longer pack is a suitcase. This sounds very stupid, let me explain. I'm somebody who moves around a lot when I travel. 
I generally don't stay in one place for more than a few days or a week at a time. I travel very minimally with a take only what you can carry mentality. So if it's something that I need to lug around on a wheeled suitcase across the sidewalk because I can't lift it up, that's just not who I am. Only three of the hostels that I've ever stayed at had elevators and they were all part of the Nomads chain brand in um, New Zealand. They were in Auckland, Wellington, and Queenstown. Every single other one of them had a staircase only. And even when we did have the elevator with the exception of Queenstown, which was fantastic because they had like four elevators, um, you had to wait for that elevator. And oof, it, when everybody was checking out at the same time, oh my god, that was like a nightmare. Everybody checking out at the same time trying to use one elevator to all their stuff down. Mm -hmm. So I had a backpack and would just walk up the stairs with the bag on my back and it was fine. I cannot imagine having to have dragged the suitcase down the stairs or tried to pick it up with a fairly flimsy handle because even after a while those handles don't necessarily last very long. Some people, it was up seven flights of stairs at least, if not more. So if you're traveling long term or even just for a few weeks, I would highly recommend switching your suitcase for a backpack just to make your life a little bit easier. Something else that I no longer travel with is an external hard drive. Growing up, I was always told to save things very often and I bought an external hard drive to bring with me when I went to Australia. Almost immediately after I got home, it crashed and it was unrecoverable. So I lost Almost all of my photos, most of my videos, including my dive at the Great Barrier Reef, were completely gone. The company who made the external hard drive, Western Digital, has absolutely horrible customer service and refused any form of refund, any form of compensation. So from now on, I'm going to be buying the Wi-Fi and saving my stuff to the cloud. Far less expensive to do that and have the photos than it would be to buy another hundred dollar hard drive and lose everything all over again. So the last thing that I no longer bring with me is clothing. Again, let me explain. I'm not walking around places nude, obviously. What I mean by clothes are items that I am not willing to part with or lose or otherwise destroy completely. Most of the clothing I end up traveling with long term ends up almost in shreds by the time I get home. I don't overpack so I'm not weighed down by the clothing I can't or won't wear because of the weather or because I don't have enough time or because I don't change multiple times a day. It also is because I want to ensure that I'm making the most out of the space that I have and bringing 15 or 20 shirts and 10 or 15 pairs of pants and shorts just does not work for traveling and if I feel I'm missing something I can always purchase it there or make use of something else and if I don't use something then it's probably something I don't need to pack next time. Thank you again so much for joining me today. I hope you found the video helpful. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, you can always drop them down below and you can find me all across social media as at Autumn Lafar. As always, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want the most. See you next time.